All right, so we finished the valve body. I wasn't even gonna mess with this pump like I've been doing this whole transmission trying to sneak by. But you know what I said, I better take it apart and make sure everything's good inside the pump gears. And then the seal for the front pump is right here. I mean, it looks great, but you know what? My luck, I'll end up having an issue. I put it together and then it's got a front pump seal leak and there ain't no way I wanna take this back apart. So I have a bunch of seals, we'll put it in there and let's go. John Elliott, who's a subscriber, thanks John if you always comment on my videos. He turned me on to a guy, Richard from Precision Transmission, who has a, a YouTube channel. And one of the things that I heard him say, he was tearing apart a C4 talking about it. Not a lot of um, information I'll get from him because it's a stock build and I didn't look through his channel. But he said he always glues in the front pump seal. Now here's the state, not much to it. You can tell when it goes together, it's pretty easy to see how it lines up with the ports here on the pump for surface, which you can, you can see my hand here and I can kind of show you where they are, but they line up just like that. Here's what the pump looks like. It's got the half moon here that's fixed to this and then the gears just kind of go around and pump the fluid. So and the seal is right here. I can pound it out easier when I take this all apart. And I think this has a front bushing as a C6 bushing. That was a mod that I've heard worked. I think I put that in a long time ago. So the gears just pop out of here. Nothing, nothing to it. I always kind of keep obviously the same orientation that came out. And the bushing itself looks pretty good. Doesn't look like it's worn too much. But I, from my memory, the C6 bushing is wider, kind of supports the converter better. pops out like nobody's business. That was supposed to be better designed or something with a slip. I don't know, I don't have those. At this point, I'm gonna use one of the stock ones I have and glue it in. Kinda of looks like this. I'll glue, put some glue around there like that guy Richard did. All right, so I got the pump all cleaned up. So not much to it. Just make sure that bushing's not worn. And let's put the seal in. I already checked it against the converter and it fits pretty well there. So someone asked me before about what I use to glue my header gaskets onto the headers. And it says 3M yellow snot, weather strip adhesive. I'm telling you, this stuff works great. I'd actually put the little snakes on the side of my Cougar. They've been on there for 20 something years, never had any issues. And then looking at this seal, I don't like it as much as the other seal, but I can't seem to find that one. So I'm not gonna mess around. We'll do it like he does, glue it in there. You don't need much of this stuff, that's for sure. Main thing is to make sure your seal is square when you go to put it in there. And then I always use a seal installer. Make sure that it goes in there straight. and it doesn't deform the seal. I'll tell you, that thing goes in pretty nice. But I will tell you this, as soon as I put it in, 
Look at the spring. That's why I don't have a lot of confidence in that thing. I'm not using that. Shouldn't pop out that. Ding. I don't like that business. I wouldn't think it'd pop out that easy. So let's try a different one. Replay. Like I said, you don't need much of this stuff. It's pretty sticky. Yeah, it's not a lot of confidence when that happens. And you can hear that noise, you know that thing's falls deep when that thing makes that sound. And the ring's in there, so I don't know if that's an old seal. I gotta say I've had it for a long time sitting around, so it could be old. But I see where that thing's seated. You heard the noise. We're gonna call it good this thing back together so it looks pretty good like I said I like to look to see that the lip is seated against the back of the pump or the seal I should say and it does so I think we're gonna be all right with that it's funny though you see that thing I, th something was lame about that next thing you know I'm gonna have a problem with that uh -uh, not happening and then you can just put that whoa Wipe that stuff off. Obviously, don't get it in the seal. <laughs> don't want that in there. And then the gears, I'll just put them right back in. They're not dirty. They look good. Sayonara. Now, sometimes I'll use a little lube on here, too. Even though it's not dry, I don't want to have any problems with it. dry startup or something crazy going on. Same with this guy. And make sure that the thing's not all wasted in here and beat up. Now this kind of grease is soluble, I think, in transmission fluid. And I put a little on here. I don't go nuts, just enough to make it so it doesn't start up dry. Then the pump, stator. That thing's crystal clear. Make sure it's not beat up from the gears, and it's not. So I'm saying it's good to go.
The other thing you can look at is there's little reliefs on little check balls here that line up with those. Galleys, oil galleys for the transmission. Well, I'll just kind of hold it up so it's nice and straight, not binding. I'll draw it up straight. Good to go. Always make sure there's no debris if you can help it. So we should be good. That seal's in there, it's glued in. Less chance of it popping out of there. Never had that happen. I don't want it to happen. Let's keep going. Now, another thing that I, I waited for for parts was the ceiling rings, these Teflon ceiling rings. These are key, but make sure that you got the right ones because some of the pumps, the older stators have 95 thousandths grooves and the newer ones are 125 thousandths as per Paul Adamitis. So I've been, I pressure checked with this to see and it worked fine. I bought them, I'm changing them. They just have a little tiny cut in it that's diagonal. You just get your little screwdriver in there Peel it open, kind of wind them off like a spring. You don't want to bend them, you can reuse them, I bet. He said they're pretty durable. But in this case, it's just like anything. You go through all this work, the last thing you want to do is have something not sealing. So after I put this on, I'm going to recheck my drums for clearance and make sure they don't these seals hold. And then we'll start the assembly. I compared these before just to make sure they're the same, both in width and diameter, and they are. And then just make sure that they see that they overlap each other. There's no gaps. They're not twisted. They're not bent. So that's what you got to do. And then the black ones here. Put them on the same way. Don't overextend them. And I'll lube them up. Obviously, could have done it before. It doesn't really make a difference. That's why I always keep this transmission fluid all right here when I need it. Don't forget your front pump bushing and the orientation with this thing. You know, there's a hole, you know, there's two cutouts here and here, and one of them goes to the, so that clears the oil feed to help lube stuff. So make sure that you don't cover it up. That's key. The little tangs fit in the tangs of the pump on each side. And there's the oil hole there, so you just make sure you got that so it's not covered. Next thing we do, I'll clear this out of here. I got the hole in the table, I'll put the case in there and I'll start assembling it. Stay tuned to Drag Boss Garage, where you're always learning something new.